Uh, and the presentation is uh, done by uh, Honapa from ARM, which already presented uh, the result of the community survey uh, yesterday. The heading of the topic itself is not so great, but I think it should be really called as uh, a resource reclamation framework in DPDK. Uh, but when I submitted the uh, CFP, I did it in a hurry. Um, so, so it's really about um, how do we do resource reclamation in uh, uh, DPDK. So, um, so for the agenda today, uh, I'll just do a quick recap so that everyone can understand uh, um, uh, what RCV is, what the uh, problem is trying to solve. And then um, I'll go over uh, general trivial process. And then what I have uh, found over time is that uh, a lot of us uh, understand how the libu RCU works. So I will go over how it does resource reclamation, um, so that it's much easier for me to explain what I am trying to do, uh, and then I'll explain, uh, uh, you know, give a uh, introduction about the uh, reclamation framework uh, in DPDK, and then obviously we'll go over the uh, performance numbers. Okay, so a quick recap here. So what you see here is uh, uh, reader threads. The green parts are the uh, uh, parts of your uh, code wherein uh, it's not uh, accessing, they are not accessing any uh, shared data structures. So we call them as uh, quiescent states. The red parts are the ones uh, uh, where it accesses, they are accessing the shared uh, data structures. Uh, we call them as critical sections. So now a writer comes along and uh, uh, it wants to delete an entry from uh, data structure D1, but uh, in when when the uh, when the uh, data structure is lock free, uh, the readers are still accessing might be accessing that entry, so you cannot free that entry immediately. So you got to wait till all the readers are done uh, accessing data structure D1. So that's at this point uh, in time. So that's when we can free. So similarly, um, we, we call the, uh, um, uh, the time frame between the delete and free as the uh, grace period. Uh, so similarly, if you want to delete an entry, uh, uh, entry two from D1, you got to wait till you know, uh, it uh, crosses, uh, when, till, the, uh, till all the reader threads have uh, uh, you know, crossed at least one quiescent state. So what does RCU do? Uh, it helps you determine when it is uh, safe to free the uh, entries uh, that you have deleted. OK, so uh, a quick recap of uh, what RCU is. So now, uh, 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 so you know, looking at uh, what is the resource reclamation process, right? So for our discussion, I have divided the uh, uh, process into four parts. Uh, one is initialization, you know, then quiescent state reporting. Uh, so quiescent state reporting is basically your readers uh, informing the writers when it is uh, when they have crossed one quiescent state. Resource reclamation. Uh, this is going going to be the uh, focus of this discussion. Uh, this is about how the writers uh, come to know when it is uh, safe to free the resources and how they go about freeing the uh, resources. And then shut down, uh, you know, obviously this is uh, part of uh, you want to shut down your applications and what are the uh, uh, different uh, steps that the application has to follow. Okay, so here I want to go over a simple uh, trivial process of uh, uh, resource reclamation. So what you have is a writer thread who wants to uh, uh, delete a data uh, an entry from a log-free data structure. 
and then you have the RCU state that the writer is uh, um, dependent on, and the readers report their quiescent state uh, using the RCU uh, uh, state. So writer issues a delete to uh, the lock-free data structure, and then he starts the uh, uh, grace period. So basically, he tells the readers, hey, I just deleted a data structure. Can you tell me when uh, you guys are done using this uh, 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 data structure? So now, you know, at this point, he's continuously polling the readers to give him that st status. And now the readers come along, and they, when they enter a quiescent state, they report the status back on the uh, um, uh, RCU uh, uh, data. So similarly, all the readers uh, report their quiescent state. At this point, uh, once the you know the last reader reports his quiescent state, it is safe to free. But the writer is continuously polling for that status. So finally, once the last uh, reader reports, he knows that it is free to uh, 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 now. Now he can go ahead and free the uh, entry from the uh, data structure. So he issues a free, right? So this is the uh, most uh, uh, trivial process. So if I look at uh, um, a data structure delete API with this trivial process, this is how it looks like. You are going to have you are going to issue that delete on the uh, uh, data structure. And then you are going to say, um, uh, you know, QSBR check, and weight is equal to true. Uh, so what that means is he's going to wait till all the readers um, uh, report their quiescent status. And after that, he's going to free the uh, entry. So what are some of the advantages in this? So some of the advantages are, you know, here the uh, the writer thread or the application is unaware whether the underlying data structure is lock-free or not. He, he doesn't really care because it is completely hidden in the data structure delete API. And if there's an application which is moving from a non-lock-free data structure to a lock-free data structure, then it just doesn't need any uh, change. Uh, because you know uh, the reclamation is uh, handled in the delete API. But some of the disadvantages, right? So some of the disadvantages are the writer thread is continuously polling, so he doesn't do any uh, useful work between the delete and free. Uh, what that means is it's going to reduce the uh, application's performance because he's stuck. Uh, polling for the uh, uh, quiescent state. So similar, the, the other issue that I see is um, uh, the contention on the RCU state itself. Now we have got the writer thread who is continuously polling uh, that memory, and you have the reader threads which are also accessing the same memory, trying to update the uh, uh, quiescent state status. Right. So. Um, so next, what I want to do is, this is uh, the user space library that's available today. Um, so it provides a uh, couple of mechanisms to uh, you know, uh, address uh, resource reclamation. Um, so the first one is called as um, uh, call RCU. So even under call RCU, there are uh, multiple uh, solutions. And I have picked up the solution that they say um, addresses most of the use cases. Okay, so we'll see how it is uh, done in this um, in, in 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 call RCU and what issues I see with that approach. So here again, we have got the uh, writer thread, the lock-free data structure, the RCU state, and the readers. So. According to call RCU, um, you know it introduces what's called as uh, defer queue, and it's a global queue. So the writer, and, and then it also introduces a separate reclamation thread, 
whose job is to uh, you know, uh, wake up periodically and go to the uh, defer queue and you know, uh, free up the resources. So how does a delete um, uh, process look like? Or the uh, resource reclamation process look like in this? So the writer thread issues a delete. Um, and then he goes ahead and enqueues that resource onto the global queue. Um, so the second, you know, another uh, writer thread comes along, it does the same thing. And then after that, the uh, reclamation thread comes up, or, you know, wakes up, and uh, he dequeues the resources from the defer queue. And then he starts the uh, grace period. Uh, that is, he asks the uh, reader threads to report their quescent state uh, status. And then, you know, he he also continuously polls for uh, the uh, quescent state status. But the important part here is uh, it's a separate thread. It's not the writer thread who is uh, doing this. So at some point, the readers, you know, when they enter the quescent state, they report back the status. Um, so at that time, you know, the reclamation thread um, knows that, okay, it is safe to free the resources. It goes ahead and uh, frees all those uh, resources. So uh, a delete API would look like uh, this. It would go ahead and delete an entry, and then it would go ahead and call RCU, which puts that deleted resource onto the defer queue. So what are the advantages in this uh, method? Writer does not poll anymore. So the writer thread's performance is not uh, affected, as in the previous case. And the other uh, 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 interesting thing is, uh, because the um, reclamation thread uh, you know, comes up, and once it comes up, it uh, you know, uh, reclaims all the resources that were there on the uh, uh, defer queue. So what that means is the cost of reclaiming all those resources is amortized uh, uh, you know, with just one call. But there are some columns that I see. Um, it adds one extra thread to the application, the reclamation thread. Um, the other uh, the issue that I see is uh, if the writer thread runs out of resources, even though those resources are on the uh, uh, defer queue, and he could reclaim and you know allocate a, res a resource from there, he can't do it uh, because the reclamation has to be done by the uh, the reclamation thread. So I see that as one of the disadvantages. So even though there are uh, resources that could have been uh, uh, acknowledged by the readers as uh, free, ready to free. You can't do that. Polling still exists, but it exists in the reclamation thread, uh, and uh, you know uh, there are there's a reclamation thread and the readers who are continuously accessing the RCU state. That problem still exists. The other problem that I see is time to reclaim the resource increases, because now you are enqueuing your resource onto a defer queue, and you know, the, um, the grace period does not start immediately after delete. It starts at a later point whenever the reclamation thread wakes up. So your time to reclaim the resources increases. And uh, uh, the defer queue is uh, global. What that means is there is more contention. There are, if you have multiple uh, writers, they are contending on that same resource. Uh, you have reclamation thread as well. Uh, you know, trying to access the uh, uh, defer queue. So the next method that's provided in the uh, liburcu is called uh, RCU defer. So here again, uh, the same things. We have a reclamation thread, uh, but what's different in this is the defer queue is per thread. It is not a global defer queue, but it's per thread. 
So, um, yes, again, uh, the writer, you know, he delays, and instead of enqueuing it on the global uh, queue, he delays on his uh, thread local uh, queue. The reclamation thread, you know, uh, it wakes up, uh, I think, every uh, 100 milliseconds in this case and it dequeues all the entries from all the differ queues and uh, uh, you know starts the uh, um, uh, grace period and once all the uh, uh, readers report the quiescent state status he goes ahead and frees up all the resources so you still have uh, all the advantages uh, that we saw in uh, call rcu here uh, Yes, that's how it looks like. But the uh, what it solves is there is less contention on the uh, differ queue because you have a differ queue that's uh, uh, specific to each writer thread. Uh, the you know the the problem of um, what happens if the writer thread uh, runs out of resources is still not uh, solved here. If the uh, you know uh, that that problem still exists, the other problem is uh, uh, not a problem, but uh, the other thing that it does is if the writer finds the differ queue to be full, then he has to uh, reclaim the resources. What that means is now the writer thread is stuck for one grace period to get over, so it affects your uh, performance, uh, um, you know, now and then whenever. The queue uh, uh, gets full. In the other case, that's not the uh, uh, that the that issue does not exist there, because um, it's a global queue, and uh, if the writer finds that the queue is full, I don't know what happens, but it does not go ahead and uh, uh, reclaim the resources. So probably it, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what it does. But I know that it does not do the uh, uh, resource reclamation. Uh, so, so in th in the previous case, it is entirely left to the uh, uh, the reclamation thread. Okay, so these are some of the uh, uh, methods that are available there, and some of the issues that I find with them. So now, uh, what do we want to do with uh, the uh, uh, DPDK RCU? So, um, so here, what I want to do is, um, uh, I want to have a, a differ queue per data structure, and I want to get rid of the uh, uh, reclamation thread. So, by getting rid of the rec reclamation thread, what it means is, it is there, there is less contention in the system, and one less thread uh, to manage. But you know we have to see how it performs. So we will go into the performance uh, uh, details later. So the process for us would look like uh, yes, you know, uh, uh, there's no reclamation thread. The reclamation runs in the context of the writer uh, thread itself. So uh, we have to worry about how it affects the writer thread's performance. Uh, as I said, yes, we will have a differ queue per data structure. So the delete process for us would look like uh, the writer thread issues a delete uh, to the data structure, and you know he starts the uh, grace period uh, immediately. It does not wait, uh, you know, uh, for a later point, or it doesn't leave it to anyone else. It starts it immediately, um, and and the point that we need to remember is in DPDK we have split the uh, grace period start and grace period check. Uh, into two different uh, uh, APIs. So that allows us to uh, start the grace period immediately. Um, and then it goes ahead and enqueues the resource on the data structure's queue. So that has several uh, advantages. So now the queue is going to contain resources that are meant for this library or, or this data structure alone. It is not going to contain a mix of uh, resources from every other data structure. Um, so now, uh, yes, the coming to uh, deletion, the deletion API would look like something like this. Uh, you would delete an entry in the uh, uh, data structure, and you would dis issue a uh, RCU start uh, call. 
and then enqueue the resource to the uh, per thread uh, data structure. So now, uh, you know, uh, the readers, whenever they uh, uh, hit a quiescent state, they are going to report back the status onto the uh, RCU state. Uh, so now, how does the uh, uh, reclamation looks like, right? So if we if we give enough time between the delete and the reclamation process, uh, you know what would happen is we don't have to wait for the readers to report their question state status. They would have already reported. So uh, reclamation process for us would look like you would um, look at the uh, uh, resource at the head of the defer queue, and you would issue the check API to see if all the readers have um, uh, crossed one question state. And you know, if yes, then you would go ahead and uh, um, dequeue that resource from the defer queue, and then free it. So as I said, when the QSBR check API is called, if you have given it enough time, it would, be, it would return a success at the very first, first instance. And we don't have to be doing any uh, polling of the uh, uh, quiescent state uh, status. So the uh, reclamation um, uh, part would look like you know you would do a peek into the queue. Uh, we can't uh, dequeue it without knowing that uh, the quiescent state uh, has been reported by all the readers. So you would do a peek, then you would check the uh, status, and uh, there there's no continuous polling. And if it returns a success, you would delete the resource from the. Um, uh, you, you dequeue the uh, resource from the defer queue and go ahead and uh, free it. OK? So, so I, at this point, what I would like to say is we want to change the uh, delete process a little bit. So the delete process should look like uh, you delete the entry, um, you start the uh, grace period, and you know, it, it, there's a possibility that your defer queue might get full. So to avoid that, you check if the defer queue is full, and you can go ahead and uh, reclaim your resource. Knowing that this queue contains resources meant for this data structure alone. And you know, uh, if, if there is enough time between the delete and uh, the rec uh, reclaim uh, calls, it is mostly that your readers have uh, uh, are going to return a success. So now coming to the uh, uh, addition API, uh, the addition API would uh, first check if there are any free resources. If there are no free resources, then it would go ahead and reclaim some resources, uh, uh, and then you know uh, it can use those freed resources to add a. Uh, uh, Entry into the data structure. Okay, um, so um, I have enabled the batching, uh, similar to batching benefits, uh, through a new uh, um, uh, patch. So basically, what we do is, uh, uh, whenever the uh, QSBR check API is called, it not only returns the status of the current. Um, uh, 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 current uh, token that you are uh, uh, querying for, it also checks, goes ahead and checks uh, how many future uh, question states have, have been crossed. And it, and it kind of caches that and it uses in the um, uh, in a subsequent calls. So um, yeah, this, this is what, uh, uh, th this is how it looks like using uh, um, uh, RCU uh, library in DPDK. Uh, now, so what is the uh, formal uh, uh, process, right? Uh, for formal proposal for DPDK. So, in the initialization uh, uh, part, uh, I would think the responsibility lies with the application or the main thread. Uh, you should go ahead and allocate the RCU variable, and you should register the reader threads on that uh, uh, variable and provide that variable to the uh, data structures to use. Quasent state reporting, obviously, it uh, uh, remains with the uh, reader threads. Um, 
uh, resource reclamation uh, responsibility, uh, I would like to put it on the uh, uh, data structure library. Uh, the advantages are it removes a lot of burden from the application, and the application code doesn't need to uh, uh, change uh, if we integrate uh, this process in the data structure library. And I think that's a big uh, uh, benefit. Uh, the library has to provide an API to uh, register a RCU variable. Um, uh, so whenever you know somebody provides that RCU variable, it goes ahead and creates the uh, defer queue to uh, uh, store the resources. Uh, then the delete API needs to be uh, uh, augmented with the process that we discussed in the previous slide. Um, uh, similarly, the uh, add API needs to be changed. Uh, and then uh, we got to introduce the uh, uh, reclaim resource uh, uh, process, which does, um, which looks at the queue, checks if the quotient state has has been crossed, and then uh, free the resources. Uh, shutdown, yes, again, it, uh, uh, it you know you got to divide that between the application and the library. Uh, application has to ensure that the threads are not using the data structures anymore unregister those threads, and the data structure, and the data structure shutdown is called, it needs to reclaim the uh, resources. So now coming to performance, yes, it's good that we are removing a thread, but what does it mean uh, in terms of performance? So uh, I tested this with the uh, LPM library. Uh, the setup In the setup, uh, I have one writer thread, which is doing uh, uh, a total of 42 million adds and delete uh, delete routes with prefix length greater than 24. That's because that's the uh, uh, that's when the table eight groups uh, get added and deleted. Uh, it does that in a continuous loop uh, when there are around 11 threads that are uh, uh, you know doing uh, uh, LPM lookup and they report their quotient state status every uh, 1,024 uh, iterations. Uh, so without RCU integration, you know, it uh, takes around 2,480 cycles for one add and delete. Uh, with RCU integration, it takes around uh, 2,517 uh, for one add and delete. So it's just an overhead of uh, 1.3 uh, percent, and I think that's uh, really acceptable given that uh, you know there's no change to the application code. So basically, uh, how how we are uh, able to achieve this is due to um, the way we created the APIs. Uh, we split the uh, uh, you know the the the, the process to. Uh, uh, know the quotient state status into two APIs. We start the uh, uh, grace period, and then we go ahead and do other work, and then come back at a later point and uh, uh, reclaim the resources when we know that readers have already acknowledged. Okay, so uh, some of the next steps. You know, there were uh, very good comments uh, from the community. Um, you know, uh, Stefan talked about uh, uh, the lack of APIs in the uh, uh, RTE uh, RCU library. Uh, I plan to add these three APIs, which can be used by the internal libraries as well as external applications. Uh, uh, Epeng had commented that the code in the RTE hash is looking uh, too much with this integration. But I think once we provide these uh, APIs, it should look much, much uh, simple. So uh, I have not uh, started working on this, but we'll get this out uh, pretty soon. Uh, finally, uh, thanks to uh, Rufang. You know, he worked on uh, taking up this design and integrating with uh, RCU. And Dharmik, uh, uh, you know, he worked on integrating it with uh, the hash uh, library. So. Yeah, any uh, questions? I, um, I, have, I have two questions, uh, actually. The first one is actually in slide eight. Can you maybe flip back to slide eight? Okay, so here I see there's 
two deletions to start with by the writer thread. Yes. Okay. So if this writer thread was continuing to operate, you know, before it peaked the queue and did a, another deletion yes. in between the two report QSs, yes. would that then sort of reset the clock and mean that none of the previous entries could be deleted until that reader thread one had gone through a whole other additional cycle and reported another quiescent state? Um, no, because um, uh, reader threads are reporting back on each quiescent state. Yeah. So for example, uh, after the first delete, that's one quiescent state. Right. After the second delete, that's another quiescent state. So if the third one has happened, you know, the readers would have reported for one and two. So you could go ahead and free one and two. Okay, right. so it's not just a single flag that's set to say this has reached a quiescent state. It records more than that when it happened and which entries could be deleted for which quiescent state. Is that yes, right? yeah, it keeps track of each state. So that's one of the difference between our implementation and the uh, libuRCU implementation. Yes, it's actually a counter, yes. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't block things. Okay, but um, the other thing then, a more general question is uh, for the you know, performance numbers. Um, so you talked about the impact on the writing thread. Yes. What about the impact on the readers, which I think is probably more relevant for things like LPM, hash, you know, our data plane threads are really the ones doing the lookups. Yes. So what's the impact there? So with this integration, we are not adding any code to uh, uh, the reader part of it, reader part of the data structure. So uh, if Right, we, but you're, you're ha it has to report the quiescent state. It has to report the okay, quiescent and, state. And in your example as well, you say it's only every 1,024 lookups it reports it. Yes. So what happens if the reader does 1,023 lookups and then goes to sleep? It means nothing ever gets deleted, right? So should it uh, not be after every lookup? Uh, well, yeah, you could do that. So, so the important part here is to provide the flexibility to the readers to achieve what performance they want. They have to, res they have to report quiescent state, right? Yeah, the so I'm wondering how expensive is that, especially if you, you know, for safety, you need to report it every time you finish any operation in case a thread gets killed or dies or goes to sleep for a long period, right? Because that would block everything if it didn't. Yes. So there, there are two cases that you are talking about. One is what happens if the thread goes to sleep, right? So there are APIs provided that needs to be called before the thread needs, has to go to sleep um, so that you know, the writer is not waiting on the uh, quiescent state from that reader thread. And you know, what happens if the reader thread dies? Well, at that point, you know, I don't know. I, I, I would think the system is unstable. But those are some of the problems that exist uh, with you know, uh, these memory reclamation uh, methods. You, you can't uh, probably avoid them. Well, I think um, I did not measure it. The reason being, this talk is focusing on the writer thread. It is not focusing on the uh, reader threads. So that's the reason, you know, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't measure it. But yes, it is going to have performance impact, definitely, because you, you, you are adding more calls to the reader threads. I'm, <coughs> I'm implementing ERC uh, incorporated in my application myself. And uh, uh, the reader thread uh, should two assignments, kind of like. So the, it's not, uh, you know, it's a very tiny, uh, uh, overhead. You know, uh, he didn't uh, present the reader side, but uh, you know, uh, before the report of the question, uh, question state, uh, the reader should uh, assign a pointer to the local uh, variable, lo uh, thread local variable, so that the, uh, the data structure is new if it is uh, being renewed. So the, if the, every thread uh, copies the new uh, pointer into the local thread variable, then the 
RIDAR thread is uh, safe to remove the, that's the, how it works. So the, there's no, almost no uh, overhead. Thank you. So I think uh, uh, there are other patches being sent, like we did this patch for L3 forward application. So there uh, we are trying to show what is the performance impact for the readers uh, with the integration of RCU on the reader side. Okay, any other question? Uh, in your slide eight, like uh, yes. One second. I want to know, like, how are you determining if no free resources, like, because the differ queue is with every data structure. Yes. So that means, like, I don't have a global view of, like, if there are free resources available. Like, n now the free resources count will be per data structure, or it's yes. So. Uh, the, how do we determine whether they are free resources or not? Mm -hmm. So that's with the data structure. Data st when, so for example, if I take uh, 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 LPM data structure in uh, uh, DPDK, mm -hmm. so you, you, you have these table eight groups, and you, you know, you know when you try to allocate one of those groups, uh, you, know, you will get an error saying that, hey, I, I ran out of resources. So that's, that's how you uh, uh, realize that, hey, there are no more resources available. So like now, with this change, will it be per data structure? Like the free resources count, if I want to determine, it will be like with yes. every data structure instead of yes. a global every FRQ having, having Yes, that's right. Every data structure keeps track of how many free resources are available. And the differ queue contains the resources meant for that uh, data structure alone. Got it. So, so the original RCU idea was uh, designed for a pointer, pointer chasing or pointer oriented data structures like trees. So. From your talk, I don't see. Uh, I think it's uh, it's much broader application area, right? I mean, you don't you don't limit yourself to the qu to the case when you have a tree-like structure and you need to uh, use the use your uh, use the pointer use the current pointer to traverse the structure and then like give it back so that it can be reclaimed. But so you can use LPM, which is a table-oriented. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you don't limit yourself to just pointer uh, chasing or uh, tree-like structures. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, and I think the, the, even libuRCU does not restrict itself to uh, pointers. You can use it with uh, table indexes as such. Uh, but yeah, that, that part is really um, outside of this process. Um, yeah, you could use it with uh, indexes as well. Okay, maybe the last question. Uh, he, yeah, just actually two small questions here <laughs> to one go. So first one is, uh, so this one per data structure, right? Kind of, so let's say if you have LPM. Yes. And if you ha have several LPMs and several hashes and reader thread need to access all of them, it has, it would have to report QSN state for each of data structure now. So if, let's say if my reader thread accesses two different or three different data structures, it means three uh, QSN state reports now, right? So is um. it so? I wonder, could it be somehow split so I can same queue probably per uh, several resources? Yeah, so uh, actually, um, uh, you know, the it, it has been set up such a way that there is a lot of flexibility to the mm -hmm. application. So you can use one RCU variable for all these three data structures. Okay. So you can have three instances of LPM, yeah, but still use good. one uh, uh, RCU variable. Mm -hmm. Or if you want, you can split all of them into three different variables. 
So okay. it totally depends. Uh, it's totally up to the application how it, so it wants to design. Somehow it. inside API, I, def I can specify which RC we're able to use, right? Kind of. At, let's say at LPM creation time. I, I didn't look yet at. Yes. Yeah. Quite. So okay. uh, yeah. each data structure library would provide a configuration API, which mm -hmm. would take the RC variable that it needs to use. Yeah. And second question about uh, LPM integration. So what is used as threat ID here? Is it Elcore ID or something different? Remem in, as I remember in RCU library, yeah. you have to somehow to provide threat ID, right? Kind of. Yes. So I think that, that part of uh, the problem is I have not addressed it still. So at this point, I think we can go ahead and use the Elcore ID. But if you are running multiple threads per core, then you got to have your own mechanism to uh, come up with a, a thread ID. Okay. But yep. I think at some time in the future, I would like to introduce some APIs wherein you can get, you know, uh, contiguous uh, thread IDs. So yeah, just a notice. As I remember right now, LPM doesn't uh, depend on Alcore ID. So you can use it on the control thread that doesn't have any Alcore ID at all. With yes. this change, it probably means that now it does depend on Alcore ID from what I understand. Well, the, that ID affects only the readers, not the writers. So you can okay. still go ahead and, you know. Uh, yeah, but I probably want to read from control thread true before, too, right, before deleting. No, it, I'm not kind of, I'm just saying. It's more like a notice, right? So right now we're introducing extra dependency, and I okay. don't know is it good or bad, or but there okay. is one. Yeah. So, uh, Constantine, I think uh, let's take this offline. I am already 10 minutes out. Okay, thank so you. Yeah, l let's uh, uh, talk it out. Thank you.